we talked earlier about the simulation, but also this concept that there could be these parallel universes mm, out there. Yeah. Because if the universe is infinite, I don't know if it is infinite, but there, there could be lots of versions of us out there. Yeah. Which again, back to Star Trek, I mean, you and I grew up on, in my opinion, the original Star Trek, the only Star Trek, William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, but they were exploring this where there was a parallel universe. Spock with the beard. With the beard, yeah. yeah. I love that episode. And of course, you know, the Star Trek <laughs> mobile things. People are rolling their eyes right now. You know, these old dudes talking about the original Star it's Trek. It's just one of the greatest shows ever. I Gene agree. Roddenberry, yeah. apparently he, he tried to create these monsters that weren't scary, but it was an hour long show back in the day yeah. with like this late 60s flair and some great uniforms. But they really made you think. And as a kid growing up in California, it really yeah. makes you think about a lot of issues of humanity. Yeah, and this notion of parallel universes is one that comes out of the math and comes out of the real possibility that space could go on infinitely far. In fact, I think if you polled most physicists and say, does space end, does it come back on itself, or does it go on forever? I think many would say that it goes on forever. And if it does, then you're virtually guaranteed that if you go sufficiently far out into space, there are copies of us. It's simply that the particles don't have enough distinct possible arrangements to yield everything distinct from what we have here if you go sufficiently far. It has got to repeat. In fact, if it goes on infinitely far, it repeats infinitely often. We are out there infinitely many times having this conversation or variations on this conversation or small differences in the environment. But yes, that would be part and parcel of reality if space goes on infinitely far. And how does... No and how do you process that? Like knowing that that could be a possibility, does that change the way we think about living? Well, you know, some of the scientists who first came upon these ideas, like a scientist named Alex Vilenkin at Tufts, he famously said it really made him quite depressed when he first encountered this idea to think that he wasn't the individual, the singular individual that he had always imagined, that there were other versions of him that would have an equal claim on being him because they'd have the same memories, the same history, the same background, and it sort of took away the specialness of being an individual. Hmm. That's one way of looking at it. Yeah. Will any of these entities come visit us someday? Well, the distance scales we're talking about are astounding. So it's very hard to imagine that there will ever be any sort of cross communication of that sort. So it's more of a a mindset and also a tool in the physicist toolkit because there are certain kinds of questions that are easier to address in a multiverse as this scenario, one of many scenarios is called. They're very hard to answer if there's a single universe, easier to answer if there's a multiverse. So we leverage these ideas to try to give solutions to real world problems, like why the dark energy which suffuses space has its particular value as one such problem. And so it's more of a useful device as opposed to something that we imagine ever really encountering in a, in a, in a significant way. Okay, but if I go five floors up on the Empire State Building, maybe the humanity here has the technology to space-time travel, maybe not. I don't think so. Okay, but... See, so you're always bound by the speed of light. Okay. And, and well, then if you take Star Trek, you wonder if you can have a warp drive that maybe curves. So putting away ideas that are, are hard to square with our understanding, it just seems very difficult to um, ever imagine encountering your double, for instance. But also maybe we're the cavemen of this century. It could be, so it's always a possibility. five floors down, none of those mm, people I would agree. ever imagine we're here. I totally agree. And so, I'm, but the reason I'm bringing this up because if we go five floors up, then if there's all these different universes and people have this new tech, then you could even argue that they must be here surrounding us, watching us now because there's so many iterations. That's right, that's right. But I right. guess they're not. Well, that's taking a leap of technological development and manipulation of the universe on fantastically large scales, which feels to me great liberty in order to imagine these things. But you're right, I would have probably said in the 1900s, great liberty to imagine the integrated circuit and computers and cell phones. So it is hard to predict where technology will lead. Yeah, you mentioned the integrated circuit. I mean, I think I heard you recently saying that like quantum physics, which we think is some esoteric thing, is responsible for like 35% of GDP. Like yeah. this thing that we didn't even probably know existed a hundred and some years ago, 
actually governs like our GPS yeah, and our exactly. transistors. And now the one, one small footnote I'll give to that is I then looked up some months ago to find the source of the 35% gross national product. And I just wanted to source it. The source apparently is me. Right, so I said this at some point. I gather, and it sort of infiltrated on on the internet in some small way. You so know, you're I don't famous know. when you're so, we're quoting you. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if thirty five percent is right, but a lot of our gross national product in the United States and in the world comes from devices that make use of the integrated circuit. And without the integrated circuit, there wouldn't be cell phones, and there wouldn't be computers, and all manner of technology. And you need quantum mechanics to get to the integrated circuit. So if you would have interviewed the great folks who were developing quantum mechanics, you know, from Bohr to uh, Pauli to Dirac to Schrodinger to Born, and said, so guys, what is this all going to be good for? How's it going to change our lives? I think they would have said, oh, probably not. We're talking about electrons and, 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 and atoms. But then you fast forward 80 years, and the work that they did has completely transformed our world. So fundamental research you don't know where it's going to lead. Five floors up. Five floors up or Time, more. Time, space, yeah. travel. Yeah. Right? But yeah. Is, is that Star Trek stuff? Is some of it possible? The warp drive is just... People have written articles on the warp drive. Okay. You know, I've never good. really looked closely to determine how close it is to say what Star Trek would have said. So some yes, some no.